my sensory challenges are actually the most pronounced feature of my being autistic. While those are the biggest challenges for me, they're also the biggest gifts. I am sensitive to taste, sound, um, touch, and then bright lights. Sensory um, sensitivity that I have is around balloons. The thing I find really overwhelming is like, Big events. Uh, because, see, with balloons, uh, you never know when it's going to pop, right? So, like, if I'm on the bus and I see a, um, a, a kid with a balloon, um, it's not as much the sound of it popping as it is that uh, the balloon, I don't know when it's going to pop. I'm really sensitive to sounds. It's like I can't turn it off. I can't filter sound. I can't um, deal with really bright light or, you know, fluorescent light is, is a challenge for me. I really don't like masks because I can't see people. I didn't realize how much I was lip reading. I wear sensory hearing aids primarily outside my home. They assist me in managing my stress levels and also interacting with people. I'm probably the most sensitive to noise and textures, which can make food and clothing difficult for the texture part. And I also keep my body blade for exercise to help me release muscle tension and low level pain. It's just to manage the extra movement so people don't look on me quirky. And while I'm sensitive to these things. I also experience pleasure from those things like and noise. It can be difficult in social settings but it also allows me to pick up on things that some people might not pick up on. Really beautiful art or beautiful music. I feel like I feel it very very strongly and so I would never want to give that up. Socializing is very important to me. I would love to learn how to socialize. Having friends to talk to feels good. The problem with that is, is I always feel socially awkward when I'm talking to other people, especially other kids my age, because I'm always worried that someone's going to think my ideas are wrong or something like that. You know, I was never very social as a kid, but I, I now as an adult, I've really, uh, even during this time right now, where we try to keep in touch with people. I avoid socializing in person unless I feel obligated or I'm tricked into participating. But I probably don't socialize as much as uh, non-autistic people would, but when I do, it's usually one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. Uh, I used to do it where I talk to them face-to-face. -face. It's usually one-on-one. -on -one. I'm usually one-on-one, -on -one, but if I'm with a group of nice people, then I feel comfortable socializing. I've not had much experience with in-person, one-on-one meetings in my lifetime. The last time I went out with anyone who was not a relative, just to relate, was over 10 years ago. We get into pretty deep conversation. Um, I'm not a fan of small talk. Um, I also have you know a network of people in my life that I'm very lucky to, to have that support me and that uh, provide me with a lot of friendship and just somebody to talk to when I'm having a, a rough day. I'd say before I knew I was autistic, I would kind of push myself too hard in, in the area of like socializing. And so that led to burnout and just really some challenging time. When I'm in a environment that's uh, where there's a lot of, where it's very loud or very, uh, where there's too much light or too many people, that that can be really socially exhausting. I hate feeling totally exhausted. I went to a birthday party for one of my children. I kept a smile on my face the whole time, but exhaustion began to show, show through and my daughter whose birthday it was noticed and said, it's time for you to leave. Just sort of check in and ask myself like how am I doing and allow myself to say no to you know that pressure or just social events sometimes so. I feel social anxiety when I'm on public. I carry around stuffies in public and some people may think of me as um, weird about that. Why does a person in their late teens carry a stuffie like that's complete toddler stuff. Well, it's not. Uh, step outside, just take a break and uh, find somewhere that's quiet because at least at that point I can uh, self-regulate. I'm doing it for me because it helps me to soothe my nerves. Um, what I do about it is, is either take a nap or um, just have a me day and do what I want to do. I think the biggest thing that I make sure I do is plan ahead and anticipate that that's going to happen. No one besides my family has seen me have a meltdown. Um, I'm probably also more prone to just kind of shutting down and needing my space. You know, for me, it can be yelling and swearing, and um, I tend to uh, misdirect my anger. I had a lot of meltdowns when I was a little girl. I don't have that much now. For me, it's more of a breakdown than a meltdown. When I do have a meltdown, it's, it's like a lot of emotion, kind of like a storm of emotions, and I can't quite pick out um, 
what I'm feeling or try to describe it or get help because it's it's just kind of a mess. I, I might get upset at somebody I, when I'm really mad at somebody else or I might be uh, mad at or, or overwhelmed by something and uh, that anxiety comes out as anger. When I do get nervous or kind of freak out, I just try to take big deep breaths and calm myself down or just try to hold in my nerves as best as I can. I will usually do my best to step away and then once I've calmed down a little bit, I'll ask for help. I need my space, just please, you know, just give me my space to calm down and to process whatever I'm going through in that moment and then to, uh, you know, I can talk to you after. So the best thing people can do, again, is just to listen.